Uh, I want to welcome everyone uh, to Appium Conf. Uh, this is the third edition of the Appium Conf. Uh, this year we are doing it virtually, but I hope uh, everyone uh, has the same rich experience uh, of Appium Conf like they've always had before. Uh, we have a fantastic program, uh, some really compelling uh, talks. Uh, I've got uh, people emailing and complaining that there are like three talks that are all I want to attend. How do I choose between one? That's, that's a good problem to have. And so, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm hoping everyone will have a great experience. Uh, I want to uh, kickstart the conference by introducing the uh, the lead of the project, uh, Appium project, Jonathan, who has uh, been the center of the gravity, at least for this project, uh, and uh, doing some really cool work, especially with the 2.0 uh, that's coming up. Uh, and I'm sure in his talk, he's going to uh, you know, uh, give a glimpse of what is coming and get into some, uh, you know, interesting peaks inside what's happening, uh, which is which is this whole uh, keynote about. Uh, so over to you, Jonathan. Thanks again for being, uh, you know, the the person driving this whole thing. Thank you so much. Over to you. Absolutely, Naresh. Thank you uh, for that warm introduction, and thank you um, on behalf of myself and everyone here for being the kind of leader of the organization of this uh, event. I was really happy that you approached us to, to do this. And um, so let's let's kick it off. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. So um, yeah, welcome to Appium Conf 2021. This is the third uh, official Appium conference that we've had. The first was in uh, London um, and the second in um, Bengaluru and now uh, everywhere, I suppose. Um, still sort of an Indian um, time zone, but uh, people from all over the world uh, zooming in from wherever we happen to be. I'm in Vancouver, Canada right now. This, uh, this talk is supposed to be a kind of what's going on with the project, State of the Union type talk. Um, it's going to be largely about Appium 2.0 because that is um, our main focus as a as a project right now, and you've heard me talking about it for a long time, and we are very close to uh, releasing it. Um, I'll go ahead and, and burst the bubble of anticipation. I'm not going to say that it's released as of this keynote. That was kind of my original hope. Um, but like all deadlines, um, this one just came up a little too quickly. So anyway, um, in case uh, this is the first time that we're meeting one another, um, I wear a couple different hats. Um, figuratively, I only wear one hat, literally, it's the one that I'm wearing right now. And also in this picture, um, I just get stays stuck on my head, I guess. Uh, so I, I am one of the maintainers of the Appium project. Um, there's lots of other maintainers. Well, not a lot. There's a few other maintainers. Um, we all do, um, you know, put a lot of, of effort and work into this project and are super grateful for um, the contribution of everyone who contributes. Um, I work for a company called Headspin. Headspin's a, you know, device cloud that is uh, built around Appium and gives you lots of other stuff um, to go along with your Appium tests. Um, at Headspin, I also lead something called Headspin University, where um, in the last uh, year I've released a pretty massive um, e-learning course designed to get you, you know, certified on Appium and Selenium. So that's something you could check out. And I also uh, maintain a, a blog and newsletter called Appium Pro with lots of Appium tips and um, tutorials and things like that. Um, and increasingly some more application-based stuff as well, uh, which we'll see a little bit about later. So on to the Appium 2.0 report. Um, the first thing that we want to um, remind ourselves of is Appium's overall vision, right? Hopefully Appium 2.0 is a step forward uh, in Appium's overall vision. Um, that's kind of what our intent is for it. It's not just, oh, well, we decided that it's time to go from one to two. Uh, I mean, why would we? We've been at one for like seven or eight years. So uh, we obviously weren't in any hurry to get to two. Um, but uh, again, just a reminder, the vision of the Appium project is if we could say it in just, I don't know how many words these are, uh, five words, um, that we want Appium to be a web driver compatible um, automation tool for everything, for every platform, right? We, we believe in 
um, the possibility and the, the vision of um, WebDriver as an automation technology and what it did for web browser automation. And we think that can be expanded and applied to everything. Obviously not um, always straightforwardly, but in some way or another. Um, and I won't go into all the, the kind of reasons for this vision and the benefits of it, because I've talked a lot about that in um, previous uh, you know keynotes like this at the last Appium conference, um, which you can look up on YouTube if you want. Um, so if we want to talk about what Appium 2.0 is in a little bit more detail from a perspective of, you know, sort of what some of the problems were with Appium 1 and what some of the solutions are that Appium 2.0 can bring, uh, we hope, uh, we could say that uh, one of the, the first problems that we encounter with Appium 1.x um, is that the drivers that we were using um, to support automation on different platforms kept sort of diverging, um, not necessarily in terms of their features, but in terms of their uh, development cycles, right? So we have these different drivers for Appium that you've used. Uh, if you've used Appium, the XCUI test driver, which lets you automate iOS applications, the UI Automator 2 driver or the Espresso driver, which allow you to automate Android applications. Uh, there's a host of other drivers that exist that you might have used, um, the Mac driver the Windows driver, um, UITV driver, you know, there's a bunch of these other drivers that are out there um, that you might have used from time to time. Um, each of these drivers are sort of developed uh, kind of in their own line of development. It just makes sense because, you know, iOS is its own thing. It's different from Android. It's not like Apple and Google get together and decide, okay, on this day, we're going to release the same feature to both of our platforms. So these drivers deal with different technologies and develop at different paces. Um, with Appium 1, that was a problem because all of the drivers were combined essentially into one project and it made it hard to uh, parse out and, and distinguish types of changes from driver to driver. So with Appium 2.0, um, we've taken the step to um, kind of enforce that each driver is its, its own independent entity with its own uh, you know, GitHub repo or um, you know, package or whatever um, it is. But Appium is going to help you manage those different uh, independent entities. So they won't all be kind of conglomerated into Appium anymore, but Appium will make it easy for you to manage them. And that's part of what Appium 2.0 hopes to do. Another problem with the way things were before um, is that we kept finding more and more platforms that we wanted Appium to support. Um, and there's way more platforms that we wanted to support than people we had to support it. We have a pretty small core team. Um, you know, a lot of folks that use Appium aren't necessarily, you know, that excited about contributing to Appium itself, or maybe the skills involved are just a bit different than what they use day to day. You know, Appium's written in JavaScript, and if you're a, uh, I don't know, a, a Java-based SDET or something, it might be a little um, formidable to think about hacking on the Appium code base itself. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do in Appium 2.0 is to make it easy for uh, us as the core team or for you or for anyone to write and share Appium drivers, because we know that we can't support all the platforms that are out there, but together, the whole world, we can, right? We just need a few people who know about these other platforms to write drivers for them. And Appium 2.0 is going to make it easy uh, for, for you to share those drivers and for others to consume them. And that's what we call the driver ecosystem. Um, we're also uh, developing something called the plugin ecosystem. And the idea behind plugins is basically that uh, we kept on seeing that people were coming up with these really interesting ideas for features to add to Appium, ways to integrate Appium with other technologies or ways to extend Appium for uh, kind of, you know, niche use cases, maybe not use cases that everyone would need or not in all cases, still, you know, very useful and valid, but we kept on feeling a tension of whether or not we wanted to put these features into Appium, because then we'd have to maintain them. Um, and they might be useful, but they not, might not be globally useful. So we had this problem. And so we decided to create um, a plugin system for Appium that makes it easy for anyone to write and share uh, plugins that can extend Appium's behavior or modify the way Appium responds to commands or integrate with other technologies. 
Um, the sky is really the limit when it comes to um, creating plugins. And of course, this whole plugin ecosystem is going to be managed the same way as the driver ecosystem in Appium 2.0. So uh, I have some examples of plugins and drivers down the road here. So if you're a little confused about specifically uh, what this means, we'll see some, some examples. Um, another big problem with Appium uh, as it stood was that the documentation was quite frankly bad. It, at one point it was quite good, but um, you know, documentation often drifts from reality um, and our information architecture um, was problematic partially because of the whole divergent driver development problem we've already talked about. So with Appium 2.0, we're also exploring ways to uh, better delineate um, documentation responsibilities with drivers becoming their own sort of entities. It makes it a lot easier for specific drivers to um, host their own documentation so that the main Appium documentation isn't cluttered with information that's only relevant to one particular driver and might be confusing to people who are coming, uh, you know, wanting to automate another platform. Um, that's just one sort of example of ways that we're trying to improve the documentation. Um, and this is, in fact, a lot of the work that that remains uh, before we release Appium 2.0. Um, and then just kind of from a development perspective, there's a lot of stuff that's accrued over the years inside of Appium. And uh, there are some things that we didn't really want to get rid of because we didn't want to make breaking changes. Uh, but it, the time has come to get rid of some of those things and make some breaking changes. So we'll be removing support for older incompatible drivers, uh, some old methods and some old capabilities and things like that. Um, so in terms of new features for Appium 2.0, it's basically um, what we talked about in the previous slide. There's going to be this driver ecosystem um, where you know drivers can now follow their own independent development, have their own independent versioning schemes, um, and you can, you know, upgrade a driver that you use without necessarily having to upgrade the Appium server at the same time, giving you a lot more uh, flexibility. You could, uh, you know, have a certain version of the XUI test driver and choose to keep that version pinned while still uh, incrementing and upgrading versions of your UI Automator 2 driver, if that's the way you want to do it, just like we're used to with dependency management in general. So it's just going to be a lot more of a sane situation. Um, and with the driver ecosystem, we are releasing code libraries that make it very easy for uh, third parties, by which I mean, uh, you know, you, um, to create and distribute drivers that that you want to um, experiment with. So last, well, night for me, morning for those of you in India, um, we led a, a workshop where we built a driver and some plugins um, in real time over the course of the workshop. Um, and so we're starting to develop, you know, the appropriate way to document and train people on how to build their own drivers, which I'm super, super excited about. And we got great feedback from the workshop. Um, and so stay tuned. I'm sure we'll be running uh, more workshops like that in the future because I really want everybody who has an interest and the, you know, the development capacity to be creating drivers. And the same is true of the, the plugin ecosystem, right? This is the other uh, aspect of, of Appium 2.0 that's kind of a big new feature. Um, the ability to you know, write your own code and plug it into Appium and have it modify uh, the way that the Appium server works or the way that certain commands are handled. Um, and it's basically up to you what you wanna do. It's extremely uh, powerful. Um, and, it, you know, the whole thing about great power and great responsibility definitely applies here. So um, very excited about that. Just like with the driver ecosystem, we're distributing code libraries that will make it easy for you to uh, write, you know, the minimal amount of code that you need to do to describe changes in the way Appium works. And that can get plugged right into Appium uh, without you having to write a whole ton of boilerplate code. And of course, you don't just have to use one plugin at a time. Um, you know, there's, I don't know how many plugins right now that you can choose from, maybe about 10 or so. And I'm hoping that as the years go by, that number will increase to, you know, the hundreds as people come up with new and interesting use cases. And so you'll be able to kind of search from this library of plugins and pull in the plugins that um, you might 
uh, find useful for your particular automation needs. So um, that's kind of an overview of Appium 2.0. Uh, you might be wondering, okay, sounds great. How do I use it? I've only been using, you know, Appium 1.21 or whatever. Um, so I'll just have one slide here on this because it's obviously a little too much to go to to go into in this kind of you know keynote style talk. Um, that would be more like a workshop thing. Uh, but it's it's very easy to install Appium 2.0. You just npm install Appium. You just want it right now. You want to use the uh, the next tag um, because it's not the official release yet. So next will give you the uh, latest version of Appium 2.0, which I think is beta 17 or 18 at this point. Then you can use um, the uh, driver management tools that come with Appium to install some drivers. So if you want to install the standard drivers that you might use for iOS and Android, you can run these commands that you see here, Appium driver install, and then the name of a supported driver. And this command line interface is pretty complicated and has lots of options. Uh, so you can always check out um, the guide that I wrote on Appium Pro to the, the driver command line interface to uh, figure out what all those other options are. One of the other important things you'll need to do uh, when um, creating sessions with Appium 2.0 is to make sure that your Appium client is sending capabilities that are W3C compatible, meaning um, they have to have the Appium uh, vendor prefix in front of them if they're not a W3C standard capability. Now, you might be in a position of using uh, one of the updated Appium clients already, like, a, like the most recent Python client or something like that. And in that case, you don't even have to worry about this because the Appium client will automatically add these prefixes for you. Um, but this is going to be a breaking change in the Appium server. We're not going to accept non-standard um, capabilities moving forward. So you either need to um, standardize them yourself uh, or rely on the client to do that for you. And if you want to, uh, you know, do some, uh, let's say some image element finding or um, image comparison, you might want to install the images plugin. Um, that functionality has now been moved to a plugin. Or if you want Appium to uh, turn into a device farm for you and manage, uh, you know, a fleet of uh, emulators or real devices or simulators, um, you can install this plugin that um, Sai and Srini wrote. Uh, which basically adds uh, a, a special web server to your Appium server that lets you, um, you know, connect and manage devices and uh, run multiple tests at a time on different devices and things like that. It's a really, really cool project. Um, but for more details, I definitely recommend reading this migration guide that we're uh, working on. Um, it's, it's a kind of work in progress, so keep an eye on this. You might want to watch it uh, on GitHub because this is going to contain the list of all the breaking changes and things that you might need to do um, to update your, your tests or your CI workflow to make sure that Appium 2.0 continues to work for you. Okay, um, of course, in addition to, um, you know, getting your server set up and making sure your test code is uh, up to date for Appium 2.0, you might also want to continue using Appium Desktop. And uh, in the past, Appium Desktop was a single application that you could download, and it would have a server, like you see on the left, that you could start, and it would have an inspector, uh, which allowed you to inspect your applications. Both of these still exist, um, but we recently decided to split them into two separate applications. There are a number of reasons that we did this, which I'm not going to go into here. But basically, all you need to know is that if you want to use these apps, um, you just have to go to the right place to download them. Um, if you want the Appium desktop server, you go to the same place you always have on GitHub. And if you want to go, uh, if you want to use the inspector, now you need to go to a different um, GitHub repo. It's called Appium dash inspector in the Appium organization. And that's where development on the inspector is happening moving forward. Um, I also recently gave a webinar, uh, which I think you can find online. Um, which announced that um, the inspector is actually now also available as a web application. So an example of how it's hosted is up at the Appium Pro website. So if you go to inspector.appiumpro.com, you don't need to download anything. You've just got a full-blown uh, inspector. 
And uh, you to use this, you need to start your Appium server with a special flag, uh, which is documented in the readme. But otherwise, it works exactly the same uh, as the inspector that you would uh, download. And it doesn't cost you hundreds of megabytes of bandwidth or you know take 10 to 20 seconds to load. It's just here. It's just a web page. Uh, you can even have multiple tabs open with multiple inspector sessions at the same time, uh, which I think is pretty, pretty awesome. So definitely give that uh, a look. And now let's uh, explore some of the um, examples of Appium 2.0 drivers and plugins um, right now that are in different states of development. And so I'm listing them out just to kind of give you a flavor of um, what's coming or what could be coming. And I'm not listing these because they are official in any way. Some of them aren't. Some of them are just things that I've been working on or that others have been working on out of interest. Um, it's designed to kind of inspire you to think of, oh, well, what could I create? <clears throat> or what might my company uh, need? Or how might my company be able to use this Appium 2.0 architecture um, profitably for us and for our customers? I know there's even one or two talks at this conference, uh, which, which go into um, how folks are creating Appium 2.0 drivers or plugins and uh, the process that, that they went through and the benefits that they're experiencing. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, those talks particularly um, because this whole idea was basically designed to create a platform for others to be creative uh, with. And so I'm excited to see what, what that creativity um, comes up with. All right, so let's look at some of the new drivers that I'm aware of. There are probably more that I'm not aware of or some that I've forgotten. Um, one of them is a driver that I've been working on at Headspin, which we recently uh, open sourced. It's a driver for the Roku um, TV platform. So you can test your Roku developer channels um, uh, using this Appium driver. I would say that the status is pretty early, so it's you know, it's not full featured yet, um, uh, but there's another uh, another guy who's uh, helping contribute on this project and, and we're going to um, hopefully get a new version of it released on NPM here pretty soon. So that one's in beta. Um, at Headspin, I've also been working on a driver for another TV platform um, called Tizen, um, which is more than a TV platform. It's kind of Samsung's operating system, um, but this driver is specifically for uh, web application um, that run on Samsung TVs. And um, I just need to put a few more touches on, on the README before I open source it and make it available, but it's going to be public pretty soon at this URL. So keep an eye on that. Um, I've also been doing some work on um, trying to create a driver for Chrome, Chrome OS um, or Chromebooks. So the Chromebook device and the Chrome operating system that runs on it. And I think we have a path forward here for uh, automating um, applications, um, especially the web-based applications that run on Chrome OS. And finally, um, I've also been doing some R&D on um, creating a driver for the KaiOS uh, feature phone platform. Uh, so KaiOS is a kind of lightweight operating system that runs on, on feature phones. Um, that are a little bit more affordable than the smartphones that I think many of us develop tests for right now. So it's a, it's a pretty growing um, uh, market in a lot of the world, and there's a lot of apps that are being developed for this. So um, at Headspin, we're pretty interested in allowing KaiOS developers to test their apps uh, using Appium. So there's not really any um, anything to uh, open source for this stuff yet, but the intent is to open source all the work uh, that's happening on these platforms. So if you want to be a part of that, you know, hit me up on Twitter or something like that, and uh, we can talk about that when uh, we're ready to move out of the R&D phase into actual development. All right, now let's talk about some plugins uh, that you could go check out. Um, one of the plugins I already mentioned is the, the Images plugin. This is actually a set of features that used to be in Appium 1.x as part of the core server. Um, but because they have some pretty gnarly dependencies, we decided to move them into their own um, plugin. So the repo is there at that link, and uh, you can use the um, Appium plugin command line interface to install this plugin. It works pretty well. Um, there's also this device farm 
plugin, not to be confused with the device farm product. Um, it's just the generic name uh, referring to, you know, a, a set of devices that you have available. This is developed by um, Sai and Srini, and uh, you can find more details at this URL. Um, they've got some pretty fun screenshots there, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, another one that they've been working on is a gestures plugin that takes some of the common gestures that you might um, need in an Appian mobile test, like swipe and pinch and zoom and stuff like that. Um, and it takes away the hard work of having to build W3C um, action um, commands to implement those plugins and instead just gives you a nice server endpoint to call. Um, sorry, not to, to implement those plugins, to implement those uh, actions. And it gives you a nice server endpoint to call um, for that from your client instead of having to, you know, reverse engineer all of that behavior. Uh, there's another plugin I wrote that basically tries to unify the document type definitions for both iOS and Android page source. Um, this is kind of an experimental thing. I'm not sure if it's ever going to be particularly useful, but I think it's a good example of a plugin uh, that's pretty simple. Um, that you could read the code and probably understand what's going on um, and just kind of takes what's happening in the, the iOS world and the Android world and makes them a little bit more uh, similar, which might make it easy if you're doing cross-platform testing. There's also another very simple plugin, which basically takes uh, Appium's requirement for W3C standard capabilities and undoes that requirement. Um, so I don't recommend using this plugin. But if you, uh, for whatever reason, aren't in a position to update all of your test capabilities with appropriate W3C style capabilities, you could just install this plugin to the Appium server and it will uh, relax that rule for you. And uh, there's another one I'm gonna talk about a little later, um, but I won't talk about it now. All right, so another thing that's important to talk about is what's happening with Appium 1.x now that 2.0 uh, has been in beta for a long time and is around the corner in terms of its release. So we have published a plan for what's going to happen with Appium 1.x. Uh, I recommend reading this uh, guide to it, uh, its full. Um, there's some very important information in there, but I can summarize it here for you. Um, basically, we're no longer working on the Appium 1.x server. And here I'm distinguishing the Appium server from Appium drivers. So when I say server, I mean stuff that's like not the XCUI test driver, not the UI Automator 2 driver, but kind of Appium's uh, internal mechanisms and things like that. Um, we will still be making updates for a while to the um, drivers like the XCUI test driver and UI Automator 2 driver to make sure that you know, if, if iOS releases a new platform, we're going to try and support it and so on. Um, but in terms of features for the Appium 1.x server, we're, we're done. Uh, we're done with that for good now. If we do find any, you know, significant bugs in the 1.x server that uh, need to be patched, we'll also work on patching those for basically the next six months. Um, and like I said, we'll continue making platform related updates. Um, or bug fixes and so on to the 1.x drivers for the next six months. Um, but basically all of the, the development work that um, we care about is happening on Appium 2.x. Um, and that, that doesn't mean that, um, like I said, the drivers are going to be abandoned for Appium 1 immediately. Uh, they'll continue to work for a while. They might even continue to work after the six month period. Um, but after that, we're not guaranteeing that they're going to continue to work with Appium 1.x. Um, and I, this feels pretty good to me, especially given that Appium 2 has actually been out in beta for well over a year, uh, and we've been trying to get people using it for that whole time. Um, so hopefully a lot of you are already using it, and if you're not, now is definitely time to get going with it. You know, check out the migration guide. Hopefully, hopefully you'll see that there's not actually a whole lot of work that you need to do um, to get it working for you. So in terms of a final release date for Appium 2.0, unfortunately, I can't give you a firm one at the moment because um, there are some significant pieces of work that remain. Um, the most significant in terms of the time and effort involved is going to be the documentation project. Uh, we want things to actually make sense for 
folks that are coming new to the project and um, for people who are trying to get information about certain drivers and things like that. So that's uh, that, there's a fair bit to do there. And uh, we need to make sure that Appium Desktop is compatible with Appium 2.0, which means adding the ability to manage these drivers and plugins from Appium Desktop. Um, and that's a bit of work. Um, we have some ideas of how to do it, but we haven't done it yet. Then there are a few other things which are important, but you know may not block a 2.0 release, um, like you know some of that removing of old cruft and whatnot. Uh, we could potentially do that incrementally as time goes on. We're obviously hoping for more testing and adoption of Appium 2.0 in the community, uh, i.e. you, and especially with cloud vendors, um, hoping that, you know, in addition to, uh, you know, Headspin, and I think one or two others that already support um, Appium 2, uh, or at least have beta support for it, that all the cloud vendors will get on board uh, and have a plan for supporting Appium 2.0 here quite soon. And then obviously, because we're putting a lot of weight on this whole, uh, you know, driver and plugin ecosystem, uh, we want people to be writing drivers and plugins so that we can really figure out um, if we've built the right kind of interface for them. Um, because those are the types of changes we don't want to be making too much um, in the future, because anytime we change the driver or plugin interface, you know, that creates compatibility issues or potential compatibility issues. So we want to make sure we get that right. So um, now is definitely the time to start hacking on your own driver and plugin and, and giving us and specifically me feedback on that. <laughs> okay, um, that's basically the, the state of the union. But um, as always, I wanted to do something that was a little, uh, a little fun um, for this talk and um, something that I've been wanting to experiment with for a long time is uh, building a um, building a game, right? So um, everybody likes video games. I always have ideas for games that I think would be fun to build. Um, actually didn't get so far as trying to implement any of my ideas building a game, but I did get so far as to download this uh, game development environment called Unity and um, open up one of their tutorial applications and kind of see how it's put together and um, start to figure some of that out. So this is a screenshot of that uh, tutorial game uh, that I did not create from scratch. Um, it sort of came with the uh, the environment, but I got to play around with it and, and build a version of the game for uh, Mac and for Android, and um, that was super fun. And I started to think about, uh, you know, what it would take to automate this type of thing, you know, and people have been thinking about this um, for a long time. And they've always asked me, well, how can Appium automate a game you know, like this, this is a basically a platformer style game where you have a little uh, character that moves and jumps and stuff like that. Um, so people have asked me, like, how can we use Appium to automate this type of thing? And the kind of honest answer that I've always had to give is, well, you probably don't want to use Appium to do that. Um, it's not probably the best tool for that job um, for a number of reasons. Uh, one is that games typically don't have UI objects in the traditional sense. They don't typically have, you know, form fields and buttons and lists and stuff like that. I mean, they might have them as part of their menus or what have you, but they're going to be more focused around, you know, things like uh, sprites or, uh, you know, 3D objects and cameras and, um, you know, light sources and stuff like that. And it's just a whole different world from, uh, you know, the world of a web page or an iOS um, SDK based application. So the tools that Appium is built on for uh, iOS and Android are all designed around um, these standard UI objects, which typically don't exist in games. Um, so, you know, when you open up a game in Appium and you try and get the page source, hoping to maybe see something like a player element in it or, uh, you know, a, a ball element or a, a token element, instead you just get one kind of black box and you have no insight as to what's going on inside that from the Appium perspective. So there are some things you can do to work around this. And I've tried to, you know, help move uh, the, the state of what's possible forward with Appium. For example, uh, adding image-based automation to Appium where you can say, 
you know, like I did uh, a while back with the demo of, of Angry Birds. You can give Appium a picture of a, of a game object and say, well, you know, find where that object is on a screen. And then you can sort of, you know, run some Appium touch commands to tap that object or swipe it around. Um, but you're still kind of working blind because even if you can use image-based automation um, to automate actions, you don't really know what's going on inside the game as a result. All you can do is look for certain things that are on the screen. And uh, games are so dynamic that you're often not in a position to be able to guarantee that the game state is always going to be represented by the same image as it was last time you were in that exact same state. Uh, another problem with image-based automation is that you know the libraries that exist that, that Appium can use are just kind of too slow. Um, so even to play a game like a platformer game where you just run and jump around, it's kind of too too much for this type of automation. Um, so you know I don't I'm not maybe super proud of this, but I think it's great that other projects have come in to fill that gap. You know Appium basically had no uh, answer for this question, and so some other folks came in and made some of their own answers. So I'm thinking of projects like Alt Unity Tester from uh, Altum and um, Airtest from NetEase. Um, Alt Unity Tester, I think, was actually demoed, I don't know if it was for the first time, but it, you know, fairly early on in the project, I think, at the first Appium conference. So this is something that people have been working on for a while, and they've come up with some pretty good solutions for. Um, but it's still not Appium, you know, and I obviously want these things to work in Appium as well. And even tools that, you know, say they integrate with Appium, like Alt Unity Tester, they sort of destroy one of the, the basic premises of using Appium, which is that you want to use this single web driver based API for everything. And instead they force you to kind of use two APIs, which are distinct in a side by side fashion. And that's, that's fine. That's possible. Um, but to me, it wasn't ideal. So, you know, I took this, uh, took this sample game that uh, I was able to build from the tutorial code. And, you know, I started thinking about, okay, well, what if, what would I want out of a, an Appium, um, you know, game automation thing? How would I even um, try and, you know, turn this type of behavior that we're seeing right, right here into a test, right? So the type of behavior we're seeing, we could have one test case that says like, um, well, let me just show you some code. You know, this is kind of what I was dreaming up when I was thinking about this problem. Like, what would I want uh, this test case to look like? So here's a test case where we're trying to say um, that this game should allow the player to run and catch some tokens. So these little diamond-like things here while avoiding enemies, right? So while jumping. So imagine that we have basically a, a page object called game that um, you know encapsulates all of the whatever the details are here um, and just exposes some uh, high level game specific functions that we can uh, use in our test suite. Just the same same principles that we would use for developing, you know, a mobile app test suite or a web app test suite. Well, we would say, oh, let's let's make the player run for a thousand milliseconds or one second. And then let's make an assertion on the state of the game. And so this is something that is really uh, important to be able to do that's hard to do with Appium. You know, you could use Appium's uh, action um, API to, you know, hold down an arrow key or something like that. So you can make a character run with Appium. With Appium, how would you determine that there was a token nearby the player? How would you make an assertion on that? You really couldn't without uh, relying on, you know, somewhat flaky image based automation. Same goes for figuring out if there's an enemy near the player um, that might need to be jumped over. Um, or how would you run and jump at the same time? And how would you make that uh, expressible in your test code? And then how would you make an assertion that after you've made this jump, the number of tokens uh, that is quite close to the player, like within a couple blocks of the player is actually decrease right because we've we've changed the state of the game we've taken the number of tokens from whatever it was before uh down one because we've consumed one of these tokens or we could you know find another test case here in the little example i showed of um if we run into an enemy 
and we don't jump on its head, but we just run into this uh, red blob here. Um, we want to assert that the player has died, you know? So um, this is a pretty short test case. Basically, we're just saying that we're uh, asserting that the player has already done something in the game. So it's not starting at the initial spot. Then we're having it run in this direction towards an enemy. And then we're checking that the player died, right? So this is, uh, this is something that I think would be pretty cool to have. Um, and I, I guess what I want to say now is actually um, these videos are an example of uh, Appium running those tests. So that code I showed you wasn't just, oh, I, uh, this is what I hope will happen. That's actually code that I wrote um, that uses this um, Appium plugin that I developed to integrate with the Alt Unity Tester uh, server and actually can figure out the state of the game and can run and jump and do all these things um, in basically real time without a lot of lag. Uh, so you can actually use it to um, you know, automate these types of applications. So um, I chose Alt Unity Tester as a kind of basis for this plugin because it seemed like an amazing technology for Unity apps specifically, and it's one that a lot of people already used. Um, and again, it just had this limitation of um, not being kind of directly integrated with Appium, which is fine. You know, uh, there's, there's no reason that it has to be, but uh, I would like it to be. So I created this plugin, um, which basically embeds uh, an alt Unity client. Um, but then it allows you to basically use whatever driver you want, right? So um, you could use the Appium UI Automator 2 driver to launch your Unity game, or you could use the Mac driver to launch your Unity game, which is what I did for this example. Um, <clears throat> And then you can just switch into the Unity context and uh, use the commands that are available within that context to actually, you know, work inside of your game versus from uh, the outside, which is where you would normally be with Appium. One of the nice things about this is you don't need to learn the Alt Unity API because everything gets mapped to the standard Appium commands that you already know. Um, you just have access to this API kind of under the hood, uh, just like you would with all the other Appium drivers. So I will say that this project is still in very, very early uh, R&D mode. I uh, didn't get a lot of sleep last night and I was working on it all today still. Um, so it's not like ready for you to use, but I am developing it uh, in the open and hope that it be can become something that we all use here pretty soon. I decided to write it in TypeScript kind of as a, a fun experiment um, to show that Appium drivers and plugins can be in TypeScript as well, not just JavaScript. So please come help make it awesome. Um, it's up at the, uh, the Headspin organization here at this URL. Um, so come and check it out. Again, it's not in a place where it's ready for general use, um, but hopefully over the coming weeks, uh, it will get there and become something useful. So um, that's basically it for me. Um, I had to end with a cheesy graphic uh, with Appium 2.0. Um, you know, the power is yours, but also the automation is everyone's. That's kind of the goal here. And uh, I do hope that um, we can learn something from Captain Planet and that somebody in the audience can figure out how to use Appium 2.0 to solve some of the world's actual problems. Um, <laughs> and, you know, app testing is, is certainly a, a worthy problem for us to solve, but there are also some bigger ones, uh, including climate change here. Um, so if anyone could think of how to use Appium to help, uh, help rectify that situation, uh, I would love to support that. Okay. That's it for me. Um, I'm not sure where we're at time-wise, Naresh, but I would love to take any questions uh, if we still have some time. Absolutely. I think uh, we can take uh, seven minutes uh, more. Uh, I think we could take seven to eight minutes easily. So Okay, great. Well, I'll, uh, just, uh, I'll go ahead and stop sharing and I'll just have my face up here. Um, that way I can also read some Zoom questions at the same time. Wow. Lots of questions. OK. Um, yeah, so there's there's some questions about uh, Appium 2.0 as it relates to specific platforms. So you know, someone's asking about iOS execution. So this is an important point. Appium 2.0 has nothing to do with iOS or Android. It has nothing to do with what's going on in those drivers. So that's a question for 
uh, the maintainers of the XCUI test driver. So we don't ask like, is Appium 2.0 going to have this or is Appium 2.1 going to have this for iOS? Appium is no longer related to iOS specifically in any way. The question to ask is, will the next version of the XCUI test driver have this or that? Um, and to do that, you have to go to that, uh, that, re that repository on GitHub and interact with the maintainers there to figure that out. I do just happen to know because I watched that repo as well, uh, that the, the, I guess the final release of the most recent version of, of iOS had a significant uh, time regression. Um, There's just an Apple bug that we can't fix or work around. So hopefully they will fix it and release a patch uh, in the next version of Xcode. Um, okay, let's see what else looks interesting here. Um, will Appium 1 test run on Appium 2? I think I covered that in the talk. Uh, more or less, yes, but just read the migration guide. Um, again, there's not changes on like the iOS and Android specific sides of it. It's just uh, some kind of um, architectural structural changes, including requiring W3C capabilities and things like that. Um, let's see. Win app driver, the Windows uh, technology that the Appium Windows driver uses, someone saying they don't have a lot of momentum and there's no other best alternatives for Windows app automation. That's a sad fact. And uh, Microsoft indicated that they wanted to do more to help that, but they haven't followed through. So I'm not sure uh, what's going to happen with that. Um, I did talk to some other people in that thread about potentially creating a new Windows driver, um, but I am like very, very far from a Windows developer. So I'm not a good person to actually drive that forward. And hopefully somebody with some knowledge of Windows automation uh, will want to, um, you know, pick up that torch and run with it. Um, uh, Neha asked, um, would some of the, of the plugins that I mentioned be moved under the Appium plugins repo, for example, the gestures plugin or the device farm plugin, maybe, um, but maybe not. I mean, that's the nice thing about plugins. They don't need to be in any one repo for them to be useful. They can be anywhere on GitHub, anywhere on NPM, and you can find and install them just the same with your um, Appium server. So kind of doesn't matter, but maybe. Um, to, to, to do. Great question from Garov. How could some experienced users contribute to documentation? Um, actually, I'm, I'm hoping to make a call for people to contribute to docs pretty soon. The big problem right now is we don't have a, a good structure in place. And so getting a lot of people working on a bad structure is just going to make it more work in the long run. So we need to get a good structure in place and create, um, you know, to do's and places where uh, documentation needs to be ported or moved or updated. And then I think we can have a board that tracks that effort and maybe have a team of, or we could, uh, we could call it a swarm of open source uh, contributors coming and, uh, you know, tackling some of those docs issues. Um, would love for your help to organize that for sure. Dun, dun, dun. Someone says hi. Hello. Hello to you as well. Um, specific, specific bug questions. I'm not going to answer right now. Will Appium 2.0 be released for Raspberry Pi? Um, I don't know. Um, you could probably run Appium on a Raspberry Pi. I don't see why you couldn't. It's just a Node.js um, library. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. It should just work there. I ran it on a Raspberry Pi at the last Appium conference, and I don't think we've done anything that would make it not work. So yes, I think. Um, Is this anything related to Appium? I'm not sure what this is, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes, because everything that we're talking about is related to Appium. How to get started with plugin creation? Um, well, 
coming to the workshop yesterday would have been a, a great first step, um, but we'll create some resources and some guides. But right now, the best thing to do is to go to the Appium plugins repo, where the kind of official Appium plugins live. And there you can read the code of the existing plugins. Some of them are very simple. And there's also something called base plugin there. And uh, the readme for base plugin actually has a lot of information about what you would need to do to write your own plugin. Um, so I would start with that. That's probably enough to get you going. Um, but like I said, we'll also hopefully be releasing a sort of general guide to driver and plugin creation, or maybe I'll do a set of videos on that or something. So um, keep an eye on anything like that. We'll I'll announce on my, my Twitter which I think was on the slides. It's just JLips at, on Twitter. Um, <clears throat> what were the reasons to split Appium Desktop and Appium Inspector? Um, the two big reasons for me were that Appium Desktop was a massive application. When you unpacked it, it was like a gigabyte in size. It was ridiculous. And most people need the inspector, but most people don't need the server. And the server was the thing that took up all the size. So um, I use the inspector, but I don't use the, the graphical version of the server because I just run the server from the command line and, and so do a lot of other people. So I wanted to be able to download and launch the inspector uh, in less than like 15 minutes or whatever it normally takes um, because Appium Desktop was such a beast. Um, so that was one reason. It just seemed like they're different enough uh, applications and it would be nice to have the one that people use most be much more lightweight and easy to use. The other reason is that the Appium desktop server cannot be a web application because it is its own server um, and it has to run Appium and Appium can't run in a browser. But the inspector is just an Appium client and that can run in a browser. So I wanted it to be its own project so that we could do things like run the inspector um, on Appium Pro as a, a regular old website. Um, and I think that that's a huge win for people so that they don't even need to download anything to use the inspector. Um, that's the other main reason. Let's see. Um, someone's asking if Appium 2 is compatible with M the Apple M1 chips. Um, I don't know. I think so. I don't have an M1 laptop yet, hopefully soon-ish, but um, we haven't done anything between Appium 1 and Appium 2 that's fundamentally changed the way that the technologies work. So it should work. The only question is, is there some dependency that Appium has that for whatever reason doesn't work? But it wouldn't be because of anything that is Appium specific. It would be like, oh, does the Android emulator work? Uh, you know. Do you know all of the the Node.js um, native bindings and the dependencies we use work and things like that? So I don't know until I try it. I think some people have tried it on M1 machines and found it to work, um, but I haven't myself. Let's see. Um, is the Appium Web Inspector the browser version? Is it only for hybrid apps? or is it also for native applications? Um, it's for everything. It's the exact same inspector that you would use as an application on your computer. It's just hosted in a website. It is literally the exact same thing. Uh, in fact, when the inspector is running as a, an app on your machine, it's also still a website. It's just running in a container. So it looks like an, an application. So there's no difference between the versions of the inspector that you download versus the one that you uh, run on the website. Uh, yes, uh, G2 um, mentions that to make the Alt Unity plugin work, um, we need to add the Alt Unity tester asset within the game, and you have to build it into the game. And yes, that's true. Otherwise, there's no way of doing this with Unity. The only way to get access to uh, game state and game objects is to actually build things into um, your, your game, because Unity doesn't expose those in some kind of um, you know, officially supported way, like Apple officially supports XUI tests and exposes automation capabilities. Unity doesn't have anything like that, um, which makes sense because Unity just compiles applications into, um, you know, kind of opaque binaries and runs them on a, a huge number of platforms. Um, so in this case, yep, you were not, you know, testing the binary that we're shipping. We have to build in 
the Unity server, the Alt Unity server to make it work. Um, but because that's the only option we have, um, I'm cool with it. But yeah, you have to follow the directions that Alt Unity provides for embedding the asset in your game for that to work. Um, let's see. Will there be scenarios? This is a question from Vinod. Will there be scenarios where multiple plugins are triggered at the same time? Yes, this is fully supported. Um, plugins can choose whether or not they allow um, other behaviors to also run. So plugins aren't guaranteed to work with one another. Um, and this kind of has to be the case because the plugin has to have uh, the prerogative to choose to fully overwrite an Appium command or to, you know, allow the original behavior to uh, to run and then to do some modification on the result of the original behavior. So internally, Appium kind of stacks the plugins in the order in which they're uh, included, and it will run uh, each of them within the other. Um, but at any point, plugins can decide not to uh, continue down that chain and just do something on their own. So you could run into a situation where two plugins don't play nice together. Um, but that's kind of the reality of the world. If two plugins are trying to modify the same behavior in conflicting ways, you just don't want to use them at the same time. But if two plugins don't conflict, then you can absolutely use them at the same time. Right. How are so, we doing, Naresh? Yeah, I think I was just about to interrupt and say, I think we are at a good point. I see there are a lot of uh, questions. Uh, it's a fantastic <laughs> <laughs> set of people who are curious to learn more. So it's always great to see that. Uh, I think there are 44 questions, and I, I also see a lot of people asking questions in the chat itself. Uh, so <laughs> lots going on. Uh, I believe uh, Jonathan will be available in the Headspin uh, virtual booth, uh, and you can meet yep. face to face with him and uh, ask him more questions. Uh, I know it's pretty late for him, but uh, he's, he's going to hang around <laughs> for some more time at least. Uh, and I'm going to take uh, this opportunity now to quickly jump in and uh, walk through some of the important, uh, you know, things uh, people need to know to get the best out of this conference. Uh, so I'm going to quickly share my screen, maybe take 15 minutes to run everyone through um, some important updates, uh, important information they need to know. Uh, but uh, before I uh, jump in, I do want to thank uh, Jonathan for the wonderful session. I think people are, uh, you know, still asking questions. So that, that's 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 in my view, uh, you know, a way to measure how how good a, se a session was. So uh, fantastic job again, Jonathan. Thank you. Uh, 